we've done Cuba to 2010, and uh, before, a small story about why I want to go to Cuba about uh, presence. Um, so, like Jane said, uh, I'm co founder of uh, WP Media, we made WP Rocket, you might know, uh, it's your premium uh, WordPress uh, cash plugin, and uh, recently, Magify, which is a plugin and service to optimize your uh, media, your images. So both of these uh, products uh, are about optimization and also are transients because transients are good for you and your website. Why? Um, who already know what is a transient? Who already use transients? Ah, yes. Okay. So I will uh, give you. Uh, answer to some questions like what is it, why, and uh, how. First question, what is uh, a transient? A transient mean it's a tempor temporary thing. Okay. What does tell the codex for us? Uh, the transient API offers a simple and standardized way of storing page data in the database. In the database. Temporarily, by giving it a custom name and time frame, content, after which it will expire, also important, and be You can uh, see this on this page of the index on WordPress report, but it's not totally true. Because, why? First, it's not the same as an option. You may know if you are already using it um, that transients are stored in the database okay, um, in the uh, options uh, table. But it does not act like an option. Like I just said, it's not only in the database. The codex said it's stored in the database. Um. So it's not only in the database, because if you're using memcache or opcache, the transients won't be stored in the database, but directly in the uh, server's memory. So the codex doesn't talk about that. Also, the timeout, um, the time frame is not mandatory. The codex is not telling us that it's not mandatory. You could add a timeout to uh, make your presence uh, express but it's not mandatory at all. Um, also, it can be deleted before the timeout. So timeout is not a minimum uh, lifetime, it's a maximum age, in fact, of, uh, for your uh, transients. And uh, the worst, it's because it's still in the database after expiration. It means if today I set a transient for one day, I came back on my website seven days later, I go uh, in my uh, database, the transient is still there. So the codex is not very uh, accurate for this, but we will see uh, why uh, and how to uh, deal with them, etc. So why do we have to use the transient? Is it a storage system? Because you get data, you store uh, them in the uh, transient uh, using the transient API in the database, but it's not a storage system, it's a cache system. Because you will gain performance by uh, using the transient API from WordPress. We will see quickly uh, when we can use the, tra the transients. For example, in your front end, if you get the uh, same content uh, on the many pages, like uh, your last comments, your last posts in the in the sidebar. Um, you don't have to always uh, go to the uh, database to do request, request again and again for the last comments between two pages, two visitors. Uh, it will be the same comments, maybe for one hour, maybe for one day. We'll see uh, also later or when we can uh, delete them. So you can use it on the front end for the same contents on the many pages. Also, uh, and uh, when you do uh, an external request, uh, like your followers, your last tweets, your friends from, from uh, Facebook or uh, an API, an external API, you, you don't want uh, um, that in, any, uh, each visitor which came uh, on your website, each page, 
reload uh, your followers, your last tweets, etc. Each, each time we do an external request, and you may know an external request because timing. So your website will be slower, of course. But using the transients, you will, you will cache the data. And a uh, sub, uh, sub example for the front end, if you do uh, custom requests in your database using custom tables, um, with, maybe, uh, with, with big joints, you may need to cache the, the, the data, the result of the request, because you don't want to, uh, again, uh, go in the database each time for each page for each visitor. Uh, an example for the back end, uh, you can display a message for a particular user uh, written from a validation or a custom error. Uh, the two screenshots here are from uh, the WordPress core. The first one is when you try to uh, activate a plugin that triggers a fatal error. So um, WordPress will try to include the plugin to activate the plugin in a kind of a sandbox mode. We'll grab the error using uh, output buffers. Then he will need to refresh the page. But between the refresh, he will lose the information about an, er uh, uh, an error was triggered. So he will store the error in a transient with a user ID and then display later the, the reason of why this plugin can be activated. And uh, it's the same when you delete plugins um, WordPress will store the, the result of the um, deleted plugins if it's worked or not. A little example, it, uh, it's uh, the code from a WordPress core. I just uh, deleted the comments. Um, we will delete some plugins, the one we just uh, checked in our backend. This will be stored in a variable called delete result. Then we will use set transient. We will see later how to use it with the name plugins delete result with uh, the user ID and then the result of this um, deletion. Then later, after the first um, refresh, WordPress will get the transient, of course, with the, ma the same name for this particular user ID. It means if another uh, user is refreshing another page, he won't have the um, notice for, for him. It's just for this user, because this user deleted some plugins before. Then we delete the transient, because we don't need it anymore. And then we can display the message, the selected plugins have been deleted. So uh, this case is not for uh, performance, but <coughs> you can use it to, um, to display some information later. And then you delete yourself your transient. So you don't need a, uh, a time frame, uh, an expiration. It's not mandatory, like I said. Where can we use the transients? A few examples. If you're running um, a website with uh, widgets like uh, Meteo or Radio, Last Tweets, etc., you may need to use uh, transients. In fact, for all of these cases, you need transients, of course. But um, do I have to manually delete my transients? Do I have to add a time frame for my transients? OK, a time frame, but a long one, a short one? Which is this? For example, for the Meteo, I think uh, half an hour or an hour is enough to cache the data. I don't think the clouds will be there in one hour, or new clouds with rain will come. So one hour is kind of perfect. On the radio, maybe th three or five minutes. OK, it's very short, but uh, it's three or five minutes it, uh, you get a new uh, new song. For your last tweets, it depends on your, uh, on your tweets. If uh, you are a, a Twitter fan, maybe you will tweet at 10 times per hour, so you need to refresh uh, more. Uh, if you tweet uh, not, very so, not so much, maybe one, one, uh, one time per day is enough you will reduce uh, the external request calls. For your friends uh, or followers, I think one day is enough. Same for your last member, if you are uh, running uh, like a uh, forum, something like that. Same for your popular post. Um, you will get some new stats, which one is now the first, the third, etc. So 
these uh, six examples um, are done with uh, transients with um, uh, timeout. This one, this ones, uh, your menu, your bug roll, your tag cloud. I can't, I can't say I need to refresh in one hour or one day. My menu will be the same, even in one month, two months. I won't set my transient for two months because in three months it will be the same. So I have to do it manually. Uh, what's the difference? The transient will stay in the database uh, as we as we saw uh, earlier. So I will have to uh, myself go. Uh, to delete my transients. So when do I have to do this? For my menu, I will wait to have an entry in my menu. Oh, does it work? Okay. Um, when I delete something in my menu, same for my uh, tag cloud. If I don't add or delete or update a new uh, uh, a tag, I don't need to refresh my transient about my tags. So you can need uh, you can use the WordPress hooks on menu uh, on tag on your post. Each time you will update a post, create a new post, or delete a post, you will force the transients to be deleted. Your transient to be deleted. So the next time you want to show your last post, the new transients will uh, store the new data. For your custom requests, I can tell it depends uh, on your requests on your needs. It it could be automatic, it could be manual. You have to understand when and why to use it. Then you will can uh, you, you could uh, answer yourself to this question uh, if you need a large of, uh, or a short uh, expiration time uh, frame. Uh, don't use data um, transient on live data because um, this example is from the uh, WordPress.org uh, download counter, of course. Um, if I use the transient to store my number of uh, downloads, I will store them uh, for like one second, two seconds. Is it really useful? Not sure. You may find edge case, of course, you may need, but avoid to use transients of on the live data because it's cached, so it's not very live. And the big question, how? How to use transients? First, uh, is it from the database or object cache? Here comes a little uh, drawing I did uh, talking about transient caching without object cache. So like 90% uh, of, uh, of you and me, um, you get your transients stored in the database. Each time a page is requested, the database will be called and then the page, the, your WordPress page will be displayed. New page, new call and uh, the page will be displayed again. But if you are using object cache like memcache, your transients are stored in the server memory and directly you, it can be set on, the, on your pages. The, the access is absolutely fast, faster, and you, you won't have to uh, manually delete your transients. We'll see this. Why you don't have to do this? Because the server will uh, manage him, uh, himself uh, itself the the expiration and uh, depends depending on of, uh, on his um, memory needs. We get uh, three basic functions to play with transients, so we can set, get, and delete them. And we also get the same with site set site transients, but be careful because the site transient functions are not the functions that manage the multi-site multi compatibility. In fact, when you use the site uh, transient functions, you, you are, uh, and you're using a, um, uh, a not multi-site uh, WordPress, it will fall back on this one, set transient. So we could say, I will always use this one. If I'm not in a multi-site, the fallback will, will be okay. And if I'm using a multi-site, this one will be okay, yes and no, because um, if I get two websites or three websites or ten websites in my multi-site that will do an external request to get my followers on each website, I will get the same result because it's the same user, it's the same number of followers. 
but I will have 10 requests. It's just useless. So it depends on uh, the uh, request. If, if the request is only for this website and another website shouldn't read the transient, you should continue to use this one. If uh, it's for on only one website uh, in your multi-site, you will use set site transients. Yep. Let's see how set transients work with three parameters. The first is the name of your transient. Uh, be careful because in your database, um, WordPress will add two prefixes because it will have uh, you will have two uh, entries in your database if you're using a timeout. So underscore transient underscore then underscore transient underscore timeout underscore. It means if you are naming your transient like super plugin and md5 uh, unique ID, this is the name of your transient timeout. Okay, 64 uh, characters. It's the maximum. It means if I add super plugins, it will be 65. In the database, it will be truncated. So this one won't be won't be stored. The e. And for the next call, when I will uh, get the transient, I will get with the last letter, so it won't uh, it won't never find him, find it. So uh, the get transient will always return false. So be careful about your name. Uh, I suggest you to to cut the M MD5. Not you, you don't need uh, 32 uh, characters for the MD5. You can just like eight, ten. It's uh, enough. Uh, and this is a bad idea. I did that. If you use the date of today, okay, uh, this is not really late. Uh, 16 uh, August uh, 14, then tomorrow it will stay in your database forever because we will see why just after. Um, the deletion of the plugin is not automatic. You have to request uh, a known transient to be deleted by WordPress. But tomorrow, this is it won't be the same date. So you can't uh, get a transient with the date of uh, yesterday. The value. So you can use strings, integers, arrays, objects, serialized data, and you get four gigabytes of data. Pretty enough. But don't try to uh, add a XML, a simple XML object directly. If you do this, you will explode. Not you, your development. Yeah. No worry. And the famous expiration. So uh, the length is in second. It's not a date. You, you can't tell expiration uh, 31 December. You have to add a number of seconds, as and this number of seconds uh, is a maximum age. It's not an expiration guarantee. It means if I set a transient for like one year, I can assure you it, it won't never uh, stay one year in your database. First reason, each time you update your WordPress core, WordPress will delete all your transients. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, you're using subscripts or plugins that will purge your transients, it will be deleted before. So it's not a lifetime; it's it's just a maximum age. You can't relay uh, on that to um, li like a, a cron. It's not a cron. It's not a web cron. You, if you want, if you want to be sure that your data will will stay in your database, don't use transient. Use an option. Uh, like I said and in the first uh, slide, uh, a transient, it's a temporary thing. Um, it's pretty important. If you're using object cache, it also uh, be possible to be deleted earlier because when the server doesn't have enough memory, it will start to, to delete the transients by age. It doesn't uh, look for the... Um, timeout just in the um, uh, added orders and uh, if you don't use an expiration so zero second and you don't use object cache 
It will always be in your database. This is why you have to delete them. And take care of the autoload. Uh, you may know, or not, in the um, options uh, table, uh, when you add an option, you can set autoload yes or no. It means when WordPress is loading, all the um, autoload yes uh, options will be loaded in um, a, object, uh, a PHP object. It means if I don't add an expiration and I get a big transient, it will, it will be autoloaded. Four gigabytes in the PHP memory, maximum. Um, if you use uh, an expiration, the autoload will be set to false. So each time WordPress will need to get these transients, it will do two requests in the database. 10 transients equal 20 requests. It's not a big deal because it's two very small requests. You can't, um, uh, how to tell? You can't say it will be more, um, it will be slower. I, I'm not sure. Because uh, it's very, uh, two to, um, requests very, very uh, small, in fact. So now you set transient, you will now get transient with only one parameter, the name. But you have to check with uh, equal, equal, equal to check the type of the result. Because if you set a transient from your followers and you get zero followers, sorry for you, and you don't check with uh, three equal symbols, the get transient will return false because zero is equal to false. So it will do again the external request to get your follower then zero again, then get equal force, and it's a loop. Your transient is not working. Using the, the, um, sir, uh, the three uh, equal symbols, you will check if it's really force, really force, it's I don't know this transient. Um, again, I talk about the deletion, the transient is not only deleted now, because you try, you try to get the transient. If the timeout expired, okay, now WordPress will delete it. If you don't uh, get, if you don't try to get this transient, it will stay in the database for uh, It's This is why you can't use um, a date in the name of a transient. And uh, talking about hooks, it won't uh, trigger this hook. When you get the transient and it's exp expired, uh, delete transient with the name of your transient won't be triggered, but this one will be. It's absolutely not in the codex, only on my slide. Um, quick example. I've got a function and uh, my external API request and I return the data, I can do something with my data, of course. So each time I will call my, f my function, each time I will do my API request. So this is bad. How to use transients? The code is not so difficult. You will try to get your transients with your custom name. If the data is absolutely equal to false, so I don't know all, the, all my transients may be uh, exp uh, expired, so I will do my external request. I will set my transients with the same name of the get transient, of course, my data, and my expiration. Then, like earlier, I do something with and I return. Next call, the get transient won't return false. So the if is false directly, I do something and I return. My external request API haven't been done. It's uh, quite the same when you use a um, uh, persistent cache with uh, WordPress. The code is slightly the, the same. But the, the cache is not, um, it's, uh, th this kind of cache is not in the database, only in the WordPress memory. So the cache uh, transients will stay between pages, not this one. Okay, um, and this is a bad idea, because if you try to read the timeout yourself using get option, because maybe you will have the bad idea like me, because I did that, to tell, I will try to get the transient. If the transient has expired, I will try to get my new data. But what if the external request will fail because website is down or what? I just lost my data. So you could you could think about 
doing your own get option to read the timeout, then check yourself the timeout and get the option yourself. But first, you will miss the transient hooks, so it's not very cool. And uh, remember that if um, transients are used uh, with memcache, you won't be able to read them using option because option will only uh, read the database, not the server memory. So it's a bad idea. Sometimes so you have to delete your transients yourself with only one parameter. And this is the same false good ID because the delete option uh, won't work if you're using obje object cache or memcache because options are not transients. Um, you may know Rast, I think he's, uh, he's here today. Uh, he did this uh, little um, script to uh, delete your expired uh, transient in your database. So the magic line is here. If WordPress is using external object cache, return. There's nothing. It won't work. But if you're not using object cache, so he will uh, uh, himself request all the, your uh, transients that uh, with an expired time. So you, you can uh, use this script to delete your transient and then clean your database from purge transient, all transient, etc. It's a good one. Um, and uh, this uh, will trigger the previous hooks I talked about. A little help for you, I, um, I propose you four plugins to clean your transients from your backend. You can delete them uh, with the second one. The uh, artists and this one are uh, kind of the same. The transient manager is not uh, the same. You will uh, find uh, all your transients set in your database. You will see the next expiration, etc. And if you're using debug bar, uh, you will find for each page how many transients have been loaded, etc. Merci. Have you got some question about transients? Thank you, Julio. Let's give it up for Julio first. Big round of applause. If you have any questions, just raise your hand. We'll have a mic runner come around and bring you the microphone. Uh, hello. Hello. Um, if your server has object caching, do you have to specify if you want your transient to be stored in object cache? No, you don't have to. It just works out. WordPress will do it in, in itself. Uh, just, I, I've never used it before, so the one place I would have it would, would be with menus. Would it be something that you'd trigger on the saving of, the, of a menu, like a hook? Yeah, you can uh, do it on the save menu. On the, each time you add uh, an item on your switch items, uh, but the save menu hook uh, is, a, is a good one, yes. Yeah. Because well, sometimes you get big menus and the requests can be huge. It's a kind of a get post, and each time you load your website, you get one, maybe two, sometimes three menus, so it can be loud, heavy. Yeah, I, th I thought about it a bit more, but y you mentioned that there was, um, I think it was a plugin or a bit of code to delete all the expired transients. So I was thinking during web development, you might want to delete all your transients, whether they're expired or not, because you don't want, you know, you're testing and you just want to see the new data. Even if you've got transients set for an hour, you actually want to see it in five seconds. Do you know if there's something in the API for that? No, you can do your own uh, your own, your own request. Uh, personally, I um, I go in my uh, PHP my admin. Uh, I select all like uh, transients, delete all. <laughs> it's okay, fine. Thanks. In fact, when you delete all your plugin, all, all your plugin, all your transients, don't do, don't delete all your plugins. <laughs> it's a very bad idea. Uh, when you delete all your transients, your website have to uh, remain the same. Maybe the, f the next call will be uh, uh, slower, but it uh, it doesn't have to break anything, any display, any widget, etc. Transients are really temp temporary. So let's imagine you you update your WordPress core, it will uh, be uh, it will delete all your transients. Imagine your website uh, has been uh, defigured. It's not logical. So your, your transients are really temporary. You, you, you could delete them uh, at any moment, but not your options. Don't delete your options. Okay, thanks. Hi. Um, Hi. If, 
if doing a core upgrade with WordPress deletes all your transients, um, what's the best way to handle that if you're reliant on those transients for some sort of functionality in the website? Don't use transients. <laughs> But for example, so if we, we, we use it in one particular case where we're storing, uh, we use a, a cookie uh, with an ID in it, and the ID is, is a way of kind of relating those two things. It is a temporary thing, but mm -hmm. you see what I it's mean? It's a temporary, but not really temporary, okay? Yeah. Uh, you can uh, create you, your own transients using the options. You set your own timeout, your own option. You grab your own uh, timeout uh, check, etc. And then you, you are sure that your transient will be deleted with the RAR scripts or uh, the WordPress updates or manually. Sure. You have to do it just. OK. Um, what would be your strategy for like um, warming up the cache after a core update? So let's say you have transient because you have some very heavy API calls. And then after every core update, there would be many yeah, lo uh, slow page loads. How would you handle that? You don't want that uh, this transient will be deleted? Yeah, they will be deleted at the core update, but how yeah. would you like warm up the cache again after the core update? So, trigger to recreating the transients? Just just reload, just reload your, your, your press. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you can do that uh, using uh, your own bot, may, maybe. Like uh, for, for, WB, for WB, WP Rocket, when you pull the cache, uh, our bot is asked to uh, to came on a website and uh, um, store the, the new uh, uh, page in in the cache of the user. So kind of, kind of that. Each time your WordPress site have been updated or, or this particular transient have been deleted, you can ask a, a ping, a cron, or something to get on your website uh, to load the heavy and avoid that uh, it will be done by your visitors. So we, you would say which pages would create the trains in and then just load them after a core update? Because otherwise I the first user uh, browsing the page would trigger the yes. trains in template. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, so, so if you don't want that uh, the user uh, is the to load the, the transients, ask a bot to, to visit your website, any page, logically any page, or it depends on your um, on your development, maybe it's only for the back end, maybe only for a particular page. Or kind of leading off the back of that, I was going to ask if you knew of um, any other solutions to not deleting transients when they need recreating. Because last year, Mark Jaquith was talking about a plugin he wrote um, that basically does, when a uh, a deletion's appropriate, it doesn't delete the transient, it serves it and then requests the new data in the background. Um, I don't know if you kn knew of any other solution to that or if that's still the only thing around. I tested this one and it's working, but I don't, I'm not sure that uh, it will be implemented in WordPress. But it's, uh, it's, it's a way to do it, to avoid uh, the l losing data before grabbing some new ones. That, that also affects the, the previous comment about the performance of new yes. people coming. Yes. It stops that performance yes. hit. Also, good question. You want a shirt? <laughs> not, not for me. Yeah, can, can you cite any uh, real world examples that you've, you've come across of a, a dramatic performance improvement after implementing transients? So, um, the best performance gain is always from uh, external requests, always. But, but, but for example, mm. I'd be interested to know if we're saving half a second on a, <coughs> on a page load or, or have you seen more dramatic um, uh, improvements? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I mean, I think I gain like three seconds on a page using transient because um, I was using a short code, and each uh, short code uh, uh, were, uh, was using an external request. And in my page, I could use any short codes, any uh, how, um, how to tell, any number of, of, short code, of short codes I want. So if I put ten short codes or twenty short codes, each time I, I've got twenty external requests. So of course you can't do that. 
uh, 20 uh, on the on different um, uh, URL. It's each time you will have to uh, recover the DNS, call the API, authentication, retrieve the data, display. So you you can you can uh, gain like uh, one second, two second, maybe ten second. Okay, but external request is uh, is the best uh, the best gain performance uh, visible. 